I love practice. Every day I get to go out there and be better than yesterday. Some athletes might not be as intentional as others, but I make sure that with every drill, I come in with the purpose to get better at it each and every day. You probably don't need to be told that track athletes, like any other athlete, spend more time training than actually competing. Of course, the same thing applies to Noah Lyles, if not more, given his star status in the sport. He wouldn't be the 100-meter Olympic champion if he's lax in his training regimen. Being born to a family of athletes, Noah Lyles' prowess on the track is not solely because of genetics. Instead, intense training and focus brought him success. He has varying training styles depending on the timeline. In-season work zones in on starts, acceleration, and feeling comfortable at top end speed. Off-season, the backbone of his training is foundational leg work, the glute ham machine, back and front squats, leg presses, and single leg Romanian deadlifts. Prior to running, he does glute and calf activation drills with a physiotherapist who regularly flies in from Australia. Lyles also gets massages weekly, and a chiropractor tends to him every other week. Normatec leg compression sleeves and the hot tub are consistent parts of his self-care as well. He previously admitted, If I don't work on each individual piece to the fullest ability, I leave variables out. And I want constants. Speaking of which, one constant that challenges him is his start the weakest part of his sprint game. Some claim that a fast start could help him overtake Bolt's record. Lyles' biomechanist, Ralph Mann, uses force plates and slow motion video to help perfect his form. Mann homes Lyles' ankle angles, so the 300 pounds of force he puts into the blocks propels him forward. Man wants the physics of Lyles' horizontal forces optimized in the first two steps out of the blocks. Totter angle tilts combined with a proper center of gravity could generate potentially record-breaking speed. Meanwhile, his physiotherapist gets granular into the extreme minute details. Lyles said, referring to an asymmetry found in his starts, while the muscles around his left ankle and calf fire, pushing his foot into the block to drive him forward his right, teres minor, part of the shoulder's rotator cuff, should also fire, pulling his right elbow and arm behind him, matching the left leg. Overall, intricacies rule Lyles' training. Why was one start better than another, he wondered. Was it actually good, or was it just me being fast on that day? I need to know all the variables. As is with everything else, though, one cannot always be aware of the variables. Case in point. After a picture-perfect win at the Paris Olympics, Lyles was left off the yearly list by World Athletics. Such is the case even after ascending to the podium four times, twice taking the top spot, once in the biggest possible stage. As most of you are probably aware, World Athletics recently announced the list with the American a glaring omission, losing out to 200-meter Olympic champion Letzilla Tobogo of Namibia and Norway's 5,000-meter gold medalist Jakob Ingebrigtsen, the two male track athletes to make the final. World Athletics said the top two in each category, track, field, and out of the stadium, were chosen from a first round of voting, which comprised votes from the World Athletics Council, officials and dignitaries connected to the sport known as the World Athletics Family and a public vote on social media. In a new addition to this year's awards, a final round of votes cast by fans of the sport will decide the overall World Athlete of the Year. According to World Athletics, the Athletes of the Year in each category, as well as the overall winner, will be revealed at a ceremony in Monaco in December as part of the World Athletics Awards 2024. Obviously, Noah Lyles won't be among the recipients of any award. To be fair, he probably doesn't care anyway. After all, he's chasing world records, not awards. You, like everyone else, are aware that Lyles, like many others, is struggling to break Usain Bolt's long-standing world records. Speaking of which, Aussie rising sprint star Gout Gout has electrified the athletics world, drawing comparisons to Usain Bolt with his blazing speed and commanding track presence. Fans and analysts alike are captivated, seeing shades of Bolt's legendary form in gout strides. Unsurprisingly, his astonishing achievements have caught the attention of global sports brand Adidas, who have extended a sponsorship offer to the rising star. Such endorsement brings the Queensland sprinter into the same ranks as Olympic 100-meter champion Noah Lyles, 
with an exciting opportunity to train alongside the American star in the U.S. in the near future. We have the opportunity to go to Florida and join the training group of Noah Lyles and Lance Browman, Gout Gout's manager James Templeton told ABC News. Templeton further shared their plans. We'll be heading over for two or three weeks. That'll be a great opportunity, a wonderful educational experience. I haven't heard from Noah, but he's a great guy, and I'm sure he'll be happy to take the younger guy under his wing a little bit. Whether or not Lyles and Gout train together does not guarantee that one of them, or even just Lyles, will be able to break Bolt's records sometime soon, and not for the lack of trying. On that note, former Olympic champion Maurice Green blasted current sprinters for getting nowhere near Usain Bolt's 100-meter world records. Green won 100-meter gold in Sydney in 2000 and is a former 100-meter world record holder with a time of 9.79 seconds. That was the exact same time that was good enough for Noah Lyles to win Olympic gold this summer in Paris, more than 20 years on from when Green hit that mark. It was still well off Usain Bolt's world and Olympic records of 9.58 and 9.63 seconds. Anyhow, Green hit out at sprinters for their lack of progress, despite the better equipment and technology available to them. Speaking with sprint legends Asafa Powell, Linford Christie, and Justin Gatlin on Powell's YouTube channel, he said, I've always said as time progresses, man progresses, technology progresses, and people get faster. With the technology and the shoes that they have now, and the tracks they are running on, there's no way in the world you can't tell me they shouldn't be running faster. He accused today's athletes of being so caught up in getting the click, instead of setting their focus on the progression of the race and trying to perfect their race. That's why we haven't seen a progression since Bolt. Bolt put it out there. But now nobody is getting close to that. Why isn't anyone getting close to that? The shoes are better than his, the tracks are faster, things should be coming faster. Of course, seeing that Green himself hadn't been close enough to Bolt's records, many are wondering what right he had to question others, or expect more from them, for something he himself wasn't able to achieve. For Lyles, he wanted to make a mark in the sport both in and out of the track. In fact, he is especially known for being an outspoken media darling, as such, it didn't come as a surprise when he, along with Mr. Beast, challenged iShow Speed to a race with him and for a cash prize of $100,000. Mind you, all this happened with just a few hours' notice, at least for Speed. In fact, the popular YouTuber almost defeated Olympic gold medalist and American sprinter Noah Lyles in a 50-yard race. Despite competing against an Olympic champion, Speed lost to Lyles just by a margin and shocked everyone present there. However, Lyles took the lead near the finishing line and ended up winning the race. Uh, what charity do you want me to donate this 100 grand to? I'd love for Speed to have it, but the kids I'm working for need it more. Oh my <laughs> God, whoa! That was now that's what you call a productive evening. Here's a peek at what other athletes are up to.